So I wrote this book, Kick Your Fear of Horses, and people ask me all the time, well, what does kick stand for? The first K is keep at it. Absolutely do not give up. I'm here to tell you it can be done. It took me a long time and it's not going to take you that long if you read the book and you follow my method. Um, this is not something that's a quick fix. This is not, you're not going to go to a three-day clinic or read my book and then all of a sudden you're going to be over your fear. This is going to take a lot of time, a lot of energy and tenacity. So don't give up. Keep at it because it is attainable. It's just going to take commitment on your part. Um, the I stands for invest. You need to invest in a good horse, a well-trained horse, uh, good equipment, uh, training, and of course, time. The C stands for courage. Courage is an action word. We know fear is an emotion and it's a nasty one. And it can blow up like a balloon, like I said earlier. But courage is an action. That's something you muster up inside you to face your fear. And we all have to do that or we're gonna stay right where we are if we don't face our fear. So the last K is knowledge. Your, the confidence you are looking for is found in knowledge. Okay, so fear begins where knowledge ends. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to teach you the, th the holes in your training, the things you don't know, the things you're not proficient at, so that you can feel confident and start feeling like you have control. If you, if you, just like you wouldn't drive a car if you felt like it was out of control. Let's say the, the power steering or the brakes were out. You wouldn't drive a car that, like that. You would make sure that you were, you were in a car and you were prepared same thing with a horse. You want to be on a horse that's well prepared, that you're prepared to ride, and you have all the knowledge. You didn't know how to drive a stick shift. Can you imagine driving around in, in, in Europe, <laughs> driving, trying to drive a stick shift on the other side? You're ill prepared. You're not going to do well unless you have practice driving that way. It's very, very same with the horse. There's people out there that don't think they're afraid but they have a conditional relationship with their horse. That is a, that is a type of fear. Um, there are people who will never canter. They walk, trot, enjoy themselves, will never canter. That's a type of fear, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there are people that will never go out on trail. They will only seek the safety of the arena. There are those that won't go on trail alone or only in groups, but not groups too big, and we never ride on a windy day. These are types of fear. These are conditional excuses of why you're not riding. Because you're feeling vulnerable or you'd get out there and do it no matter what the conditions were. Probably the number one question and email that I get asked is, how do I make my horse stop spooking? And I have a chapter in the book called It's Not the Horse. Um, it's a vicious cycle what we do to our horses. What we do is we're constantly, we are afraid. We get in the saddle, the horse sees us and goes, oh, here she comes. She's gonna scare me to death again today. Or here he comes. Immediately, you've already got him nervous because you're nervous. So now you get on and you start to go out and ride around. And next thing you know, you're nervous. The horse becomes hypersensitive and you're thinking, look, at, look, at, see, my horse is gonna spook any minute. You did it. <laughs> you did it. And so what we now have is a hypersensitive horse with a really nervous rider, and this horse is going to blow. He's looking, because you've tell, told him that there's a monster out there. He's waiting to spook. Okay, so now you've got the vicious circle. Now you're even more afraid, because your horse is afraid. Okay, this is one of the things I'm telling that you need to, to, to stop that cycle. The cycle isn't fair to your horse. I have people tell me all the time they have these wonderful, well-broke, really neat horses, then they know they're ruining them. And they say, now they don't like me. Well, it's not that they don't like you. You walk up to put the halter on, they turn their butt to you because they're like, please, not again. You're just going to scare me to death. They're flight animals. They are not natural leaders. They need you to be their leader. So who's desensitized? You or the horse. It's really you. And finally I realized, if I found out where the hole was in my training, I peeled back the layers and I found out that exact problem that was making me fearful, worked on it, knew I could then control the horse in that scenario, it took the fear away. 
And it wasn't like one day I wasn't fear fearful. All of a sudden what I noticed is it was melting. It was melting. And then one day I got out there, saddled that horse and got on him and realized I had no fear. I didn't have sweaty palms. I didn't have that feeling in the pit of my stomach. I don't think I could have ever chased cows. I, I now horse camp, I take my horse to the beach, to the mountains, to, I mean, all the places. And I, I actually drive the trailer myself. I mean, these are things I didn't think I could ever do because I was so fearful, not just with horses, but in life. And it's changed every aspect of my life. And that's what I want for you. So in closing.